Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. This is the 10th and final video in the playlist covering inflammation and immunology. This is going to cover the different types of organ transplant rejection, including hyperacute, acute, chronic, and graft versus host. Organ transplantation is the replacement of dysfunctional tissue with healthy tissue from somewhere else. An individual can receive an organ donation from an animal, such as a pig heart valve, or they can donate tissue to themselves by moving healthy tissue from one part of the body to another, such as skin grafting following a burn. However, Almost all of the step one questions about transplantation are from one human to another human that is not their identical twin, because from a genetic standpoint, that's more or less the same as donating tissue to yourself. This type of transplant is known as an allograft, and that's where we're gonna be focusing most of our attention. The donor for an allograft can be living or recently deceased, depending on what organ we're talking about. A wide variety of tissues can be transplanted, but our discussion will focus primarily on the functional organs that require vascular connection, such as the kidney, heart, and liver. We will not talk much about structural tissues like tendons because they don't really have as much rejection. Blood transfusion is another type of transplant, but we will cover it in more depth in the hematology section because it seems more appropriate there. Again, here's this table that we keep bringing up throughout this section because a lot of what we're talking about is when the immune system is either too strong or too weak. And this is just another example of that. Organ rejection is when the immune system is too high and attacks the organ. Ideally, we would have the immune system working just right to where it's not rejecting the organ, but it's also protecting us from pathogens. We talked in the last video about the different types of hypersensitivity, and there's going to be a lot of overlap between those two concepts. Following an organ transplant, the grafted tissue expresses antigens that are not present in the recipient, and these antigens are recognized as foreign by the immune system. The immune system reacts as if the donated tissue is an infectious microbe and attacks the graft. This leads to damage and dysfunction of the transplanted organ during transplant rejection. This is not an issue when the patient is donating tissue to themselves or when the donor is an identical twin because the grafted tissue is not recognized as foreign. It's close enough genetically to just be thought of as normal tissue. However, any donation from a genetically different person has a risk for transplant rejection. Therefore, the immune response to the organ has a significant impact on the patient's prognosis. If the immune system is kept in check following a transplant, there is immunologic tolerance for the new organ, and the patient can often live a long life with the new organ. However, if the organ is rejected, their lifespan may be very short. During transplant rejection, the damage is often most evident in the vessels of the donated tissue. This should be intuitive because the vessels in the graft are the interface between the donated tissue and the recipient. The graft antigens lining the endothelium come into constant contact with the immune cells circulating in the host's blood. So this is really where the host and the graft meet together and those cells come into contact with each other. The damage to the vessels can present with everything from mild fibrosis to very severe hemorrhage. Since the presence of transplant rejection can severely impact the patient's prognosis, patients need to be monitored very closely following a transplant. They need to be monitored for the onset of symptoms related to dysfunction of the transplanted tissue, and they will probably undergo periodic laboratory evaluation in hopes of identifying rejection as quickly as possible. Since some forms of rejection are treatable, you want to be able to figure out that rejection is taking place as quickly as possible. When organ rejection is suspected based on the clinical picture or laboratory results, you often will do a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. And this will help you rule out the presence of another disease that's not related to transplant rejection. 
Now that we have covered the introductory information about transplant rejection, we can focus in on more of the details related to the four main types of transplant rejection. I have summarized all the high yield information in this table, which you can see here. However, depending on what device you're using and how good your internet connection is, it's probably tough to read. So I've also posted this table in a high quality picture format on my website, which will make it easier for you to download, view, and share. If you'd like to be taken to that page with this picture, you can click on this orange button here. As we cover this material over the next few slides, remember that the most important thing is the time frame for the onset of symptoms. As you can often determine what type of rejection it is just based on how long it's been since the patient got the organ. Sometimes you can be totally confused by the symptoms or the pathophysiology, but if you just know how long it's been since the patient had surgery, you can make a pretty good guess about what the answer is. You should also know the basic mechanism of action for each type of rejection, as well as how the graft appears on biopsy. In this table, I've also added what type of hypersensitivity is most related to the mechanism of each type of rejection. This is relatively low yield, but I added it because I thought it helped cement the concepts and the overlap between these two videos that we've covered, because there is a lot of similarity between the previous video on hypersensitivity and this video. We will start with the hyperacute rejection, which you can see here in the top right corner. I give a high yield rating of 1. That is a rating scale from 0 to 10 that tells you how important each topic is for the USMLE Step 1 Medical Board exam. Hyperacute rejection occurs almost immediately, and it's often evident while you're still in surgery. You are already seeing signs of rejection. It is caused by accidental ABO blood type mismatching of the donor and the recipient. So it's extremely rare now. This doesn't happen very often, but it could still occasionally pop up on test questions. The reason it happens so quickly is because your body has preformed antibodies against the donated tissue. For example, a recipient with type B blood would have pre-made antibodies targeted at the carbohydrates on the blood of the type A donor. The presence of preformed antibodies is why the reaction takes place so quickly, because we don't have to waste time making new antibodies targeted at the tissue. You already have antibodies ready to go. This is an example of type 2 hypersensitivity because it is antibody-mediated cytotoxicity. It results in thrombosis and occlusion of the graft vessel, which is why you can often tell this is happening while you're still in surgery, because you're going to be able to notice this grossly just by looking at the organ. It's going to have pale areas of ischemia as well as bleeding and thrombosis, so you're going to be able to notice that pretty easily. When this happens, the transplanted organ has to be removed immediately. Acute rejection is the most common type of transplant rejection. It usually has an onset between weeks and months of the transplantation. It is a T-cell mediated response against the foreign MHC in the donated organ. Therefore, it is an example of type 4 hypersensitivity or delayed type hypersensitivity. This process results in leukocyte infiltration of the graft vessel, which can be seen on biopsy. The risk of acute rejection can be diminished somewhat with prophylactic immunosuppression. And if acute rejection is identified early, acute rejection may be able to be treated with immunosuppressants and corticosteroids. Chronic rejection is the highest yield type of transplant rejection. It occurs months or years after the surgery to have the organ transplant. The exact mechanism is not well understood, but it probably involves a combination of type 2 and type 4 hypersensitivities directed at the foreign MHC molecules, which may look like a self-MHC presenting a foreign antigen. Chronic transplant rejection can be thought of almost as accelerated aging. Chronic rejection is a slow, progressive decline in organ dysfunction, while acute rejection is a more rapid decline in function. It results in intimal thickening of the vessel as well as fibrosis of the graft vessel. And these things can combine to lead to a slowly progressing organ atrophy where the organ shrinks. There is no treatment available for 
chronic rejection, and these patients need to receive a new organ transplant as soon as possible. However, when chronic rejection is suspected, a full workup is done to rule out a case of late onset acute rejection, which may be treatable. So although the time frame is usually able to distinguish acute and chronic rejection, there are some rare cases where acute rejection will come on years after the transplant. So you do a full workup for chronic rejection just to make sure it's not acute rejection because acute rejection can be treated sometimes. Now that we have covered the first three types of transplant rejection, we need to take a step back and look at the big picture for a moment. The three types of rejection we have talked about so far all involve the immune system of the person receiving the organ attacking the donated tissue. That is one class of organ rejection that could be thought of as host versus graft, although that phrase isn't really used very often. Here, the signs and symptoms are going to be primarily localized to the donated organ. There's another type of translate rejection we're going to talk about that's the opposite. In graft versus host disease, the immune cells and the donated tissue attacks the patient receiving the donation. The immune cells in the donated tissue proliferate and spread through the body. Therefore, the signs and symptoms are not isolated to the donated tissue, and you can see problems arise in multiple different organ systems. Graft versus host disease is an example of type 4 hypersensitivity. It is mostly seen in bone marrow transplants because this is the donated tissue that has the largest amount of immune cells. Symptoms of graft versus host commonly include diarrhea, rash, and jaundice. The time frame for the onset of graft versus host varies widely depending on what subtype it is that's beyond the scope of this video. Immunosuppressants are usually the treatment of choice for graft versus host. That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and would like to see more, please do click here to subscribe to the channel. And this brings us to the end of the inflammation and immunology section. So I'd like to direct your attention to the table of contents link here. You can click on this blue box and you can see the videos I have covering a bunch of other sections. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.